टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट प्रिवेंटिव ऑर्थोनोटिक्स एज आई टोल्ड यू इन द इंट्रोडक्शन क्लास ऑफ ऑर्थोनोटिक्स ऑर्थोनोटिक्स कैन बी डिवाइडेड इन टू प्रिवेंटिव इंटरसेप्टिव एंड करेक्टिव ऑफ दीज थ्री ब्रांचेस नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू डील विथ प्रिवेंटिव ऑर्थोनोटिक्स वॉट डू यू मीन बाई प्रिवेंटिव ऑर्थोनोटिक्स इट इज नथिंग बट ऑल द प्रोसेसेस और ऑल द टेक्निक्स और ऑल द प्रोसीजर्स विच वी कैरी आउट to prevent the onset of malocclusion is called as preventive orthodontics that means a malocclusion has not occurred we are taking every necessary step to prevent a malocclusion from occurring in an individual is called as preventive orthodontics now let us see what and all are the procedures or what are the procedures that are carried out in preventive orthodontics a preventive orthodontic includes patient education sorry patient education and parent education caries control care of deciduous dentition management of ankylosed teeth maintenance of quadrant wise tooth shedding shed time table checking for any kind of oral habits and their proper inter, uh, proper uh, uh, interception of those habits by use of uh, appliances wherever necessary occlusion equilibration to eliminate any kind of occlusal prematurities prevention of damage to the occlusion extraction of supernumerary teeth wherever they are present management of deeply locked first permanent molars management of abnormal frenal attachment and space maintenance let us look into all these procedures one by one the first one is patient's parent education here the care of the child should start early before birth of the child parent should be given counseling regarding proper dietary supplements or proper nutrition that the mother of the child has to take when the child is in the womb before birth whenever a parent is counseled regarding the proper uh, dietary supplements that she has to take when she is pregnant then adequate nutrient supplements will be supplied to the fetus which will lead to optimal growth and development of both dental as well as craniofacial skeletal structures and even general growth of the fetus once the child is born mother should be given proper counseling regarding the way she has to feed the child and the type of nipples that the mother has to provide the child with and proper feeding techniques of the child there are artificial nipples are available uh, some are uh, you know uh, functional and some are non functional that means some artificial nipples will allow the child to suckle in a more physiologic manner which will lead to optimal growth and development of the dentition and adjacent craniofacial structures whereas some nipples will not permit physiologic manner of suckling which will lead to aberrations in the development of orofacial structures in the child leading to malocclusion and the mother of the child should also be given instructions regarding the do's and don'ts of bottle feeding sometimes mothers will be leaving the child with bottle in the mouth and the child will be you know uh, you know keeping the nipple of the uh, milk bottle in the mouth and sleeping like that this will lead to what is called as nursing bottle syndrome so the mothers should be cautioned about these things by this kind of parents education we can minimize the onset of malocclusion or we can minimize the incidence of malocclusion in the children as the child grows the next important preventive orthodontic procedure is caries control particularly in the deciduous dentition most of the malocclusions are claimed to occur because of discrepancy between arch length and tooth material 
Suppose in a deciduous dentition, there are proximal carious lesions. As the tooth structure gets distracted by the proximal caries, the two adjacent teeth will tend to move towards each other, reducing the amount of arch length. Thereby, uh, there is more chance for development of a crowding in that region. That is, arch length is lost as a result of proximal caries lesions in deciduous dentition. So, in order to prevent the loss of this arch length, the proximal caries lesions, particularly in the deciduous dentition, should be addressed at an earlier stage, thereby preserving the arch length and eliminating the occurrence of malocclusion, that is crowding. Okay. The next important preventive orthodontic procedure is care of deciduous dentition. Now, before the occurrence of See, if the carious lesions has occurred, they need to be addressed properly. But it is always better to preserve a natural tooth in its natural condition. That means we need to prevent the occurrence of caries itself in the deciduous dentition. How? So the most common uh, etiology for caries is plaque harboring or food lodgement. So in deciduous dentition, we need to use some things called as pit and fissure sealants and topical fluoride applications in order to reduce the risk of caries in that deciduous dentition. So, the deciduous dentition should be taken care of by application of pit and fissure sealants and topical fluorides whenever and wherever necessary to prevent the occurrence of caries lesions. It is said that the best space maintained is the natural tooth. As, the, uh, as so long as the natural tooth is preserved in its normal anatomical form, there is no chance of arch length loss. If this structural, this natural structure of the natural tooth is changed by caries lesions, then there is more chance of loss of arch length and occurrence of malocclusion. So, we need to prevent the occurrence of malocclusion in a deciduous dentition by using either topical fluoride applications or pit and fissure sealants wherever indicated. This is how we need to take a proper care of deciduous dentition. So the parents should be visiting to the dentist more frequently to get uh, their child's uh, dental status evaluated periodically by the concerned dental practitioner. Okay. Now. The next important procedure that comes under preventive orthodontics is management of ankylosed tooth. For example, if a deciduous first molar or a deciduous second molar is ankylosed, then the roots of these ankylosed molars will not resorb. Thereby, the deciduous molar will stay in its place only for a prolonged period of time, preventing the eruption of underlying premolars. If the deciduous tooth is ankylosed, even the premolars will take an alternate path of eruption and they might erupt either buccally or lingually depending upon the path of least resistance, thereby leading to ectopic eruption of premolars. This can happen either in the molar region or in the incisor region or anywhere in the oral cavity. So, these deciduous teeth which are ankylosed should be properly managed or should be extracted with proper technique at the time of their shedding, not before the time of shedding. They should be left like that only till the, their shedding time arrives. Once the shedding time has arrived, then that particular ankylosed deciduous tooth should be surgically extracted, thereby eliminating the interference to the eruption of succedaneous permanent tooth. Okay. We need to maintain a quadrant wise shedding timetable for every patient. If at all a particular tooth is not shed at its point of shedding time, 
then we need to appropriately evaluate the patient whether the underlying permanent tooth is present or not and then uh, carefully we should remove the deciduous teeth that, that means if the deciduous teeth are not shedding according to their timed schedule uh, according to the scheduled time of shedding then we need to clinically interfere and uh, remove that particular deciduous tooth to facilitate the erection of underlying permanent tooth if it is shedding according to its schedule normally then no problem but we should make a note of the appropriate shedding schedule of uh, deciduous teeth for that particular individual in a quadrant wise manner okay now as i told you abnormal oral habits are considered to be normal till per, till certain age of time in the children if those habits will not resolve by themselves rather if they are carried out during the uh, late childhood then it will lead to malabrusion yet when a habit is said to be abnormal it is always better to uh, you know it is always better to control it as early as possible to avoid any deleterious effects on the developing orofacial structures so in children who have abnormal oral habits like tongue thrusting thumb sucking or mouth breathing or lip biting habit whatever it is whatever the habit and whatever be the severity of the habit it is always better to control the habit in the children as early as possible when we note it to prevent any occurrence of aberrations in orofacial structures okay the next important a preventive orthodontic procedure is occlusion equilibration that means whenever a deciduous dentition has occlusional prematurities say due to the presence of enamel pearl on the occlusal surface or due to a restoration which is improperly placed due to a high points in the restoration whenever the child bites from the posterior rest position to habitual occlusion due to interference from those occlusional prematurities the mandible will be guided forward this is called as uh, pseudoclastry that means the mandibular relation will appear as a more forwardly position with respect to the maxilla due to shift or functional shift of the mandible due to the presence of occlusal prematurities so wherever necessary these occlusal prematurities should be eliminated to avoid the occurrence of malocclusion and any deflective forces on the jaws and dentition this is one of the important preventive orthodontic procedure now preventing the damage to the occlusion for example there are some ther therapeutic procedures particularly in the field of orthopedics for example if a patient has a scoliosis which which is a spinal cord disorder sorry the vertebral column disorder due to the uh, forward bending of the vertebral column or uh, sorry due to the lateral bending of the vertebral column there is something called as milwaukee braces so the orthopedicians will use the milwaukee braces which take support from the craniofacial skeletal structures to correct the uh, you know to correct the alignment of the vertebral column these milwaukee braces might cause damage to the dentition and orofacial structures so wherever necessary sufficient precautions and guidelines that are prescribed by the orthopedicians should be followed to prevent any damage to the dentition and orofacial structures while using such kind of therapeutic procedures okay now extraction of supernumerary teeth you know that presence of supernumerary teeth might cause deflection might cause deflection of the adjacent normal tooth for example if you have a mesiodens between the two central incisors whether the mesiodens will erupt into the oral cavity or it will not erupt into the oral cavity is a secondary one but its presence will cause deflection of the eruption path of maxillary central incisors leading to a change in their optimal angulation and presence of a midline diastema between these two central incisors so wherever you notice a supernumerary tooth 
whether it is an erupted one or, or an erupted one it is always better to remove the supernumerary tooth to allow a normal alignment or normal eruption of the adjacent normal teeth okay why i have taken the example of mesodons is it is the most common supernumerary tooth that is seen in the oral cavity moreover a supernumerary tooth may might be seen in the mandibular premolar area or maxillary lateral incisor area or paramolar in the region of molar whatever and wherever be the supernumerary teeth it should be removed to allow sufficient alignment of the adjacent normal teeth and to eliminate or to avoid occurrence of a crowding or a, any kind of malocclusion like spacings now management of abnormal frenal attachment most of the times it can be seen in the maxillary label frenum if the frenum is attached almost at the crystal region of the ridge or you know if the label frenum has a high attachment that means its fibers the fibers of the frenum gets extended even into the interdental papilla between the two central incisors because of which whenever the lips are in function the frenum will cause pulling force over the interdental papilla leading to notching of the interdental bone between the two central incisors and appearance of midline diastema that means presence of an abnormal frenal attachment will lead to malocclusion so wherever you see a abnormal frenal attachment it should be appropriately appropriately managed and the attachment should be relocated by surgical technique similarly we can see in some cases presence of tongue type where the lingual frenum is abnormally attached the tip of the tongue cannot touch the roof of the palate that means the tongue is not able to clean the oral cavity we call it as toilet of the oral cavity okay the tongue cannot uh, uh, optimally clean the oral cavity and it it cannot uh, exert its force that is added to the muscle balance thereby leading to aberrant development of the dental and orofacial structures even the speech will also be affected so if at all a patient is diagnosed of a tongue tie it should be appropriately corrected to prevent aberrant development of the dental and orofacial structures and the most important of all these procedures is space maintenance however be the care taken and whatever may be the interest shown by the parent or the patient in managing the dentition it sometimes falls encroaches the space has a tendency to be lost that means suppose a tooth might be shed shed or fallen off very early than its scheduled time this will lead to shift of the adjacent teeth or drift of the adjacent teeth into that exfoliation space thereby the arch length will be reduced so to avoid the reduction of the arch length by mesial or distal migration of the adjacent teeth depending upon the teeth which is lost we need to maintain the exfoliation space by appropriate kind of appliances this is called as space maintenance so space maintenance is nothing but maintaining the deciduous tooth exfoliation space adequately to save it or to preserve it to accommodate the erupting underlying permanent tooth this is called as space maintenance now let us look into details of space maintenance before we could discuss about the space maintenance we have one more uh, a kind of uh, preventive orthodontic procedure that is management of deeply locked first permanent molar in some cases you can see a prominent bulge on the distal surface of the deciduous second molar due to the presence of this prominent bulge the underlying permanent first molar will find difficulty in erupting into its optimal position in such cases you need to adjust or modify or, or recontour the distal surface the bulge distal surface of the deciduous second molar to allow easy eruption of the underlying permanent first molar this also comes under preventive orthodontic procedure 
Now let us look into the space maintenance. Now I told you the space that is left over after exfoliation of the deciduous tooth should be maintained appropriately till the succedaneous permanent tooth erupts or occupies that space. Now how can we maintain this space? This space can be maintained by, maintained by some appliances called as space maintainers. Again, these space maintainers are classified into different types by different authors. Let us look into those classification systems. According to Hitchcock, the space maintainers can be classified into removable or fixed, space maintainers with bands or without bands, functional space maintainers or non-functional space, space maintainers, active space maintainers or passive space maintainers or certain combinations of the above depending upon the clinical situation of the patient. This is one classification system. Yet we have another classification system according to Raymond C. Thoreau who classifies the space maintainers into removable space maintainers individual tooth space maintainers or complete arch space maintainers. One more classification of the space maintainers provided by Hendrickson is removable space maintainers and fixed space maintainers. This is the simplest form of classification system. Now, whatever be the space maintainer, either it be a removable one or a fixed one, there are some requirements or there are some ideal uh, prerequisites that has to be satisfied by the space maintainer. What are those things? One is the space maintainer should be able to maintain the entire space. That means it should strictly hold the adjacent teeth within their positions preventing them from encroaching into the exfoliation space. So that the entire space that is available will be maintained sufficiently adequately and properly till the succedaneous permanent teeth erupts into the oral cavity. The next requirement of a space maintainer is it should restore the function and it should prevent over eruption of the opposing tooth. Okay. So the function of the missing tooth should also be satisfied by that space maintainer and at the same time, it should prevent the supra eruption of the opposing tooth into that exfoliation space. That means it's a simple, it should be a tooth form. The space maintenance should be tooth form wherever possible. So that the function will be restored and the supra eruption of the, of the opposing tooth will also be prevented. Okay. And it should be simple in construction. It should not be a complicated one. It should not be a complex one. So that the time taken will be less and the skill required, required will also be less so that the fabrication should be very simple. It should be enough to withstand the functional stresses. That means once the space maintainer is, in, maintainer is in the oral cavity, it will be subject to masticatory forces and physiological forces that occur in the stomatognathic system. The space maintainers should thus have adequate strength to withstand the functional forces. And at the same time, it should not exert any kind of deleterious forces on other structures of the oral cavity. It should serve its purpose, but it should not have any kind of negative effects or deleterious forces on the adjacent structures in the vicinity of the space maintainer. Okay. Now, it should also permit a proper oral hygiene. It should not interfere with oral hygiene of the patient. If it interferes with the oral hygiene of the patient, yes. Its purpose will be served, but it will be at the cost of decay of other teeth. So, wherever possible, the space maintainer should provide adequate room for maintenance of a proper oral hygiene. And a space maintainer should not restrict the normal or optimal growth and development. Okay, usually space maintainers which transverse, transverses across the midline, that means space maintainer covering covered over ridge on one side across the roof of the oral cavity or floor of the oral cavity to the other side of the ridge these kind of space maintainers will have a tendency to restrict the transverse development of the jaws so wherever necessary the space maintainers should be fabricated such that they will not interfere with the optimal development of the 
dental arches and the jaw bases okay now even the space maintenance should not interfere with normal function for example if we give a space maintenance like lingual arch it should be fabricated such that it should not interfere with the function of the tongue or else the patient will land up in problem associated with the speech and deglutition so these are the ideal requirements that are necessary for every space maintainer whether it be a removable one or a fixed one now if you look into the removable space maintainers again removable space maintainers can, can be classified into functional space maintainers and non functional space maintainers now what is a functional space maintainer and what is a non functional space maintainer functional space maintainer is nothing but a space maintainer an appliance that serves the function of the missing tooth also and at the same time it should facilitate the normal stomatognathic functions apart from serving the purpose of a space maintainer whereas a non functional space maintainer is just a piece of acrylic that spans or that covers the edentulous area thereby preventing the uh, migration of the adjacent teeth, tooth into that edentulous area that means functional space maintainer is a space maintainer that carries even teeth of uh, of the missing area whereas non functional space maintainers are a simple denture a simple acrylic plate that covers the edentulous area preventing the encroachment of adjacent teeth into the exfoliation space what are the advantages of removable space maintainers they are easy to clean and oral hygiene can be properly maintained when when we are using a functional kind of removable space maintainer then even it it restores the vertical dimension also okay as we are replacing the missing tooth also in this functional space maintainer in this removable functional space maintainer it will even serve the purpose of maintaining the vertical dimension and it is easy to detect the caries of the remaining teeth for example we can remove the space maintainer and we can check the dentition clearly whereas this is not possible with fixed space maintainers so this is the advantage of the removable space maintainer wherein we can even uh, have a comprehensive evaluation of the health of the remaining teeth and their supporting structures also now functional space maintainers serves the function also as i told you beforehand and with the removable kind of space maintainer even as the underlying permanent tooth erupts we can trim the acrylic portion to accommodate room or to allow space for eruption of the adjacent uh, uh, eruption of the underlying permanent tooth that means it is easy to create a room for the erupting permanent tooth when we have a removable space maintainer okay now suppose if we are using a non functional kind of removable space maintainer it is just an acrylic plate covering the edentulous area that means whenever the patient bites there is a gap between the edentulous space which is covered by the acrylic plate and the opposing tooth now there is always a tendency of tongue to go and lodge in that empty space between the upper and lower teeth this will lead to development of a tongue twisting habit but if the same uh, space maintainer is restored with a functional space maintainer which has even the replacement of the tooth there is no chance of tongue encroaching into the open space between upper and lower teeth got it so removable functional space maintainer usage will also prevent the development of a tongue twisting habit also okay now one more advantage of the advantage of the removable space maintainer is there is no necessary for fabrication of a band or a crown whatever it is it is a tedious processor procedure isn't it so we can even avoid the tedious process of band formation when we are opting for a removable kind of space maintainer these are the different advantages that are possible with a removable kind of space maintainer we can even have some kind of disadvantages of the removable space maintainers let us look what are those disadvantages it might be broken as it is a removable one while placement and removal there are more chances of breakage of the appliance and the next important disadvantage is patient's compliance sometimes patients might not be cooperative 
they will not keep the appliance uh, you know and uh, they are reluctant to use the appliance this is one of the important drawback of removable space maintainers if at all the patient is cooperative and using it then it will be of benefit if the patient is not cooperative and the patient is reluctant to use the space maintainer then it's gone case okay now as i told you the lateral jaw growth is restricted particularly in the space maintainer covers the entire uh, both the sides of the arch the entire arch so the space maintainers that spans the midline and covers the dental arches on both right and left sides either in the maxilla or in the mandible they are having a tendency to restrict the lateral development of the uh, dental arches and the basal bone okay now sometimes the removable space maintainers which we fabricate might cause irritation of the underlying soft tissues on which they get seated these are the important disadvantages that we can encounter uh, that that are seen with removable space maintainers now what are the indications of removable space maintainers one is aesthetic concerns sometimes a uh, deciduous incisor might be prematurely lost so we need to maintain this space by space maintainer but it is not sufficient just to maintain the space here here we need to even uh, replace the missing incisor because as because it is the main tooth that adds to the aesthetics of the person in such cases uh, we need to go for removable space maintainers which are functional removable space maintainers that carries a tooth along with it okay now poor abutment health whenever a patient has a prematurely exfoliated tooth and we need to maintain the space and if the adjacent teeth which are called as abutment teeth are not healthy their periodontium is not vital or not sufficiently uh, healthy to accommodate the fixed space maintainer then we can opt for a removable kind of space maintainer now in a cleft palate cases usually we need to we, we can use a removable space maintainer in a cases of cleft palate where we can see multiple missing teeth and this removable space maintainer will also serve as an obturator in case of cleft palate whereas if you use a fixed kind of uh, space maintainer in a uh, uh, cleft palate cases it will not serve the purpose of obturator so the removable space maintainer in cleft palate cases will serve the purpose of space maintenance as well as acting as an obturator or a feeding plate now minimum of 5 months time still remaining for the eruption of the permanent tooth suppose if a deciduous tooth is prematurely exfoliated and the permanent tooth underlying is about to erupt then it is not an indication for a removable space maintainer because if you give a removable space maintainer also the space maintainer will either interfere with the eruption of the permanent tooth which is about to erupt very earlier or it might get dislodged or it might get uh, pushed by the erupting forces of the underlying permanent tooth so removable space maintainers are indicated only in those cases of prematurely mis prematurely exfoliated uh, deciduous tooth where at least 5 months of time is remaining till the eruption of the underlying permanent tooth okay so that means there should be sufficient time available for eruption of underlying permanent tooth to use a removable kind of space maintainer okay now incompletely erupted permanent tooth okay suppose if a permanent tooth is not completely erupted and there is a much time for its eruption then we can use a removable kind of space maintainer with a pontic uh, sorry the removable kind of space maintainer with a replacement in it which mimics the missing tooth till the eruption of the adjacent permanent tooth that means most of the times it will be uh, you know it, it will be benefit beneficial if you use a functional kind of space maintainer rather than a non functional kind of space maintainer now in cases where there are multiple missing teeth or multiple teeth multiple deciduous teeth that are exfoliated then it is always better to use a 
uh, acrylic partial denture kind of uh, space maintainer to restore the form and function of the missing teeth and at the same time maintain the space adequately to allow eruption of the adjacent uh, so, uh, allow the eruption of the succedaneous permanent teeth okay now what are the contraindications of a removable space maintainers number one is obviously uncooperative patients patients who are allergic to the acrylic material and patients with uncontrolled seizures patients with a history of epileptics uh, a, a history of epilepsy and who are having a uncontrolled kind of seizures these are the patients who are contraindicated for removable kind of space maintainers it is always better to use fixed space maintainers in patients having uh, these three characteristics now what are the commonly used removable space maintainers one is acrylic partial dentures i told you uh, it's nothing but an acrylic plate with the replacements for the missing teeth to serve the function at the same time serves the purpose of maintaining the space and sometimes we can we need to have to go for complete denture to maintain the uh, you know arch length and sometimes we can also have something called as removable distal shoe space maintainer wherein we have a acrylic coverage over the uh, edentulous area and this acrylic coverage leaves a distal extension that goes into the mesial aspect of the erupting permanent molar which acts as a guide for proper vertical eruption of the underlying permanent first molar so this removable acrylic distal shoe is used mainly in cases where the permanent first molar is not completely erupted and the uh, deciduous second molar is prematurely exfoliated in this cases we can have a acrylic coverage over the missing deciduous uh, second molar place which leaves a distal extension that goes mesially or that goes uh, into the socket mesial to the permanent molar which acts as a guide for the vertical eruption of the permanent molar and at the same time it acts as a mesial stop for the permanent first molar preventing it from mesially migrating it into the uh, deciduous second molar expo exfoliation space okay so that was about removable space maintainers now what are the fixed space maintainers these are nothing but they are fixed to the teeth in the patient what are the advantages of fixed space maintainer one is bands and crowns need to be fabricated here uh, which require very minimal preparation very minimal preparation no tedious lab work okay now here once we have a fixed retainer it will be somewhere away from the ridge okay it will be uh, away from the ridge it is not closer to the ridge so the erupting permanent tooth have sufficient space or sufficient room to erupt into the oral cavity whereas in removable space maintainers we need to trim the uh, tissue portion of the acrylic to accommodate the erupting permanent tooth but here it is not necessary the fixed space maintainer will have sufficient room to accommodate the erupting succedaneous permanent tooth okay now even in uncooperative patients we can use a fixed type of space maintainer very successfully because the patient can't remove the maintainer and place the maintainer the the space maintainer manipulation will be under the control of the clinician so even uncooperative patients can also be uh, successfully uh, given this uh, fixed kind of space maintainers now as i told you with the removable space maintainer the lateral jaw growth is inhibited whereas in fixed space maintainer there is no possibility for lateral jaw growth inhibition yet even in fixed kind of space maintainers also wherein we are giving space maintainer such that it spans from one side of the arch on one side to the arch on other side along the floor of the mouth or roof of the mouth depending upon whether we are using in mandible or maxilla even a fixed kind of space maintainer that uh, that you know that crosses the ridge from one side to the other side then this will also inhibit the lateral jaw growth okay but it's not as much as we see with the removable space maintainer now the disadvantages of fixed space maintainer are much skill uh, and expertise is required to fabricate this to design and fabricate this appliance okay and due to the lodgement of the foot between the bands and the tooth surface 
there is more chance for decalcification of the tooth decalcification of the banded tooth occurs with the fixed kind of space maintained okay if the pontic is used suppose if you are using a fixed space maintainer with the replacement for the missing tooth then it is very difficult to adjust it to allow eruption of the underlying permanent tooth so the pontic which we are using in a fixed space maintainer will interfere with the eruption of the succedaneous permanent tooth okay now if you are not using a pontic in the fixed space maintainer if you are using just a fixed space maintainer without any replacement for missing tooth then the opposing tooth might erupt into the edentulous area which is present in its counterpart region in the opposite arch so these are the disadvantages that we can see with the fixed kind of space maintainer now some of the commonly used uh, fixed space maintainers are band and loop space maintainer here in the image you can see that the first permanent molar is banded and a wire component is soldered to this mesial aspect of the band and this wire component has a curved portion that is going at and attaching to the proximal surfaces of the premolar so this will help in maintaining the space for the erupting second premolar similar thing instead of going for bands on the permanent first molar we can actually fabricate crowns for the permanent first molar and uh, and solder a um, wire loop at the mesial aspect of the crown and the wire supports the first premolar and thus preventing the drift of the molar into the um, uh, edentulous space and at the same time preventing the premolar to move into the edentulous space thereby maintaining the space for erupting permanent to that is second premolar okay now you can ask me where to go for band and loop where to go for crown and loop usually we go for band and loop space maintainer because it does not carry any necessity for destruction of the tooth structure but in case the permanent first molar is grossly decayed or affected by caries lesion then it is always better to go for resolve the caries or if it is uh, you know if it is endodontically involved you can go for pulpectomy and go for endodontic correction then go for a crown for that particular tooth as it is normally required also then you can go for crown and loop kind of space maintainer that means when a permanent first molar is healthy then you can go for band and loop space maintainer whereas a permanent first molar is uh, destructed by caries lesion then you can go for a crown and loop kind of space maintainer now the lingual arch it is used particularly in the mandible where we have a bilateral missing of the deciduous teeth here we have bands that are adapted onto the first molars on both the sides and to these bands we solder a wire component that is formed into the shape of the arch this will hold the you know hold the molars at the same time it will support the lingual surface of the anteriors thereby preventing the mesial migration of the molars and lateral drift of the incisors and the canines and the next kind of fixed space maintainer is transpalatal arch you can see it is used in the maxillary arch it holds the molar on one side of the arch with the molar on the other side of the arch thereby preventing the mesial migration of the molars into the edentulous space usually during fixed orthodontic treatment also we use a transpalatal arch to reinforce the anchorage to prevent the mesial migration of the molars into the extraction space in case of fixed orthodontic treatment okay now i told you even fixed space maintainers will also interfere with the lateral jaw growth these two are the kinds of the fixed main, fixed space maintainers that prevent the lateral jaw growth because they are combining the left side of the arch with the right side of the arch thereby the lateral growth of the jaw will be prevented if not jaw at least the lateral growth or lateral development of the dentition will be inhibited with this kind of space maintainers yet we have another kind of fixed space maintainer that is nans palatal holding arch this also uh, it's a appliance where we are banding the first molar on both the sides and we are soldering a wire component that carries a acrylic button 
in the region of anterior hard palate that is in the region of rugae this acrylic button will be pressing against the palate and due to this orthopedic force even if the molars tend to move mesially the anchorage or the support which we are getting from the anterior hard palate due to the abutting of the uh, acrylic button of the transpalatal arch the molars will be prevented from mesially moving into the exfoliation space or extraction space if we are using it for fixed orthodontic appliance therapy okay now here we have one special kind of space maintainer we call it as a digital shoe space maintainer digital shoe space maintainer is nothing but a space maintainer which is used in cases where the permanent first molar is not yet erupted but we have a missing deciduous second molar first permanent molar is not erupted yet we have a missing deciduous second molar in such cases there are chances that the molar which is not the permanent molar which is to be erupted will erupt into the deciduous second molar space to avoid this to maintain the exfoliation space of deciduous second molar and at the same time to guide the erupting permanent first molar into its normal path of eruption we have something called as distal shoe space maintainer in the distal shoe space maintainer we will either fabricate a band for the deciduous first molar or we will fabricate a crown for the deciduous first molar and this crown carries a metal rod that is soldered onto the distal surface and this metal rod has a horizontal portion and the vertical portion the horizontal portion extends distally as you can see in the image up to the mesial, uh, mesial portion of the uh, permanent first molar, reptic permanent first molar and it leaves a vertical extension that goes mesial to the erupting first permanent molar this is called as distal shoe this distal shoe will prevent mesial migration of the permanent first molar into the deciduous molar exfoliation space and at the same time guides the permanent first molar to erupt optimally vertically into its normal space of eruption in the dental arch this is distal shoe space maintainer yet we have another kind of space maintainer called as aesthetic anterior space maintainer it's nothing but uh, you know same like a lingual arch space maintainer but the anterior portion of the space maintainer will carry acrylic teeth that are attached to this fixed space maintainer usually in cases of uh, prematurely missing deciduous anteriors we will be using the uh, aesthetic anterior fixed space maintainer okay now another kind of space maintainer we have is a band and bar kind of space maintainer here we have a bands onto the tooth mesial to the edentulous area and distal to the edentulous area and these two bands have a metal rod that is soldered onto the distal of one band and mesial of one band that spans the tooth exfoliation space and preserves the uh, exfoliation space thereby allowing the room for erupting permanent succedaneous tooth okay so these are different kinds of uh, fixed kind of space maintainers that we commonly use in your clinical practice now there are some factors that you should consider before planning the space maintenance let us look into those factors the first one is time elapsed since loss of tooth that means once a deciduous molar is exfoliated prematurely how long can you wait till you give a space maintainer it is said that once a tooth is extracted or exfoliated within the immediate 6 months there is a maximum probability for drifting of the adjacent teeth into the extraction space or exfoliation space so it is always required or it is always advised to give a space maintainer as early as the deciduous tooth is either exfoliated or extracted. So the space maintainer, space maintainer either a removable one or a fixed one should be planned and delivered to the patient as early as possible immediately after exfoliation of the deciduous tooth. Okay. Now, dental age of the patient. While giving a removable appliance, you should take into consideration the dental age of the patient. That means, 
you should make a note of the eruption sequence and eruption pattern of the teeth. Suppose a tooth is exfoliated and uh, you can see a uh, cusp tip of the underlying erupting permanent succedaneous teeth. You can't go for a fix, uh, you, you can't go for a removable space maintainer at that point of time. You need to go for a fixed kind of space maintainer because the tooth is already uh, in its place erupting into the oral cavity, sprouting through the gingiva. If you give a removable space maintainer, it might interfere with the nor normal eruption of the permanent tooth and at the same time it, it might cause uh, dislodgement of the removable space maintainer. So at that time you have to go for a fixed kind of space maintainer. That means the eruption sequence and the chronology of eruption and the dental age of the patient should be considered when you deliver a space maintainer. This will give you an idea about, of about whether to go for a space maintainer, whether the use of space maintainer is really required or not or whether you have to go for a removable one or a fixed one will be depending upon the dental age of the patient. So it, it depends upon your own clinical skills to take a appropriate decision depending upon the dental age of the patient. Now thickness of the bone covering the unerupted teeth. The thicker the bone covering the unerupted teeth the delay will be the tooth eruption and it is mandatory at that point of time to maintain a space of exfoliation, a space of exfoliation to exfoliated tooth appropriately because there is a more time for eruption of the underlying permanent tooth because of thickness of the bone covering the tooth. It is said that it takes about four to five months for a premolar to erupt through a bone of one millimeter thickness. The more thicker the bone, the more delay will be in the eruption of the succedaneous permanent tooth and it is an absolute indication of maintenance of a exfoliation space or preserve the exfoliation space. Okay. Sequence of eruption of the teeth. As I told you, the chronology of the teeth should be considered while you plan for a space maintainer. The space maintainer which, which you give should not interfere with optimal eruption of the adjacent teeth and it should not exert abnormal forces on the adjacent teeth. Like that you have to plan a space maintainer. Now, the next important factor is congenital absence of a permanent tooth. Suppose the radiographs of the patient reveals congenital absence of the permanent tooth but its predecessor or the deciduous tooth is missing too earlier. Then you should appropriately plan whether you maintain the space of the missing tooth and go for a replacement at a later stage of life or whether you are going to close that space of the missing tooth with adjacent teeth or with drifting or measle movement or distal movement of adjacent teeth depending upon the tooth that is missing. So when a tooth is congenitally missing, you should appropriately plan to maintain the space if you are opting for a replacement later or if you are not opting for a replacement of that congenitally missing permanent tooth later, you can close the deciduous tooth missing space by movement of the adjacent teeth into that exfoliation space okay these are the factors that you should consider a space maintenance for an individual so these are the different procedures that are available to prevent a malocclusion from occurrence so timely intervention so appropriate timely intervention with any of these preventive orthodontic procedure will help to a greater extent and prevent a malocclusion from occurring in an individual. Hope you all understood. Thank you.